Good morning, everyone. It's a long time coming. It's been two years since we've done anything like that. It's so good to see you uh, and to plan and celebrate why we celebrate Christmas. It's because of Jesus and the peace that he brings. We want to welcome you. My name is Brenton McGee. I'm the choir director here at Millersville Community Church, and it is our joy and pleasure to put this program together. We've got five worship teams, well, not worship teams, but five ensembles, and you already heard our contemporary worship, Abby Hudson, and we've got many other things planned for you. We are here to praise God, all right? So we just had the lighting of the peace candle, and now I'd ask you to sing just the first verse of Come Thou long expected Jesus. So please stand.
It has been a privilege and honor to work with a dear, dear friend, Grace Milligan. Uh, Grace and I, we've known each other for a couple of years, about eight, nine years, and we always collab. I mean, I've brought her here and you've graciously welcomed here. Uh, and uh, what we kind of do is we do our own a little arrangement once in a while, piano and stuff. So we're going to do a four-handed piano of Angels We Have Heard on High with a mix of God Rest, Ye Merry Gentlemen. One of the highlights of this morning uh, has been a long time coming. There's not an oratorio or piece of music I have sung more in my career than Handel's Messiah. Uh, and uh, it's one of the most iconic Christian written pieces. Now, of course, Amazing Grace, of course, is the most well-known hymn. But the most well-performed piece of music, especially during Christmas time, is what is known as George Frederick Handel's Messiah. Uh, he wrote it in the year 1741. 
in the midpoint of his career, Handel was considered a Baroque composer, a late Baroque composer particularly. Uh, he was a German-born, Italian-trained, British composer. That is right. German-born, and that's his Dutch, Italian-trained, mamma mia, and British composer. And uh, he wrote Handel Messiah in just three to four weeks. We don't know his estimate how long. Most scholars believe that it was 24 days. Uh, and it was written uh, for the first time, performed in Dublin. And um, one of the performances, The King on the High Course, which we will not do today, unfortunately, perhaps another year, uh, when the king heard the Hallelujah Chorus, he would stand on his feet and, and would perform this. It was pretty popular in the extent, but it grew well before his later time. Um, I was actually studying what classical British composers after his period, and there's not much. There's not much Thomas Aids or something like um, different composers like that that are not as well known in the classical period. What they particularly performed was Henry Purcell and, of course, George Frederick Handel. And since the centuries, even today, many um, churches and performances perform Handel's Messiah. Um, I believe this is the most important work. Why? Because of the three parts. It's really three parts. It's the Christmas portion, it's the Easter portion, and then it's the resurrection. Today we will focus on the solos on the Christmas portion. So uh, the first three numbers are the fir very first three numbers in the piece of music. Uh, the first is Symphonia, which is a symphony in the Baroque era, just with strings for today. Uh, and uh, they do a wonderful job on that piece. And then uh, we will do the tenor solo, uh, which is Comfort Ye, which is a, a competato recitative. And then Every Valley Shall Be Exalted, which is the aria. Now, for those who don't know what an oratorio is, it's just like an opera, like you go see like a theater show, but it's non-staged. It was a non-stage performance. So there's no costumes, there's no anything like that. So um, I believe um, Handel was inspired, and we know this, was inspired by God uh, to write this Messiah. Uh, it is a non-dramatic work that talks about the gospel of Jesus Christ, why Jesus came to be born, to save us, to live a life, to heal people and raise people from the dead, to die on the cross and rose again until he returns. So as you reflect upon this Handel's Messiah that's been performed over 250 years, may you reflect upon the message of why Jesus brings us peace. So here is Handel's Messiah. Let's do it. Our tenor soloist is Conrad Fritz.
Conrad, can you take a bow, wave your hand here? Thank you, Conrad. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. Thank you so much. All right, so it is your turn to sing. <laughs> I know you, you have to follow that. I knew I would get a good tenor soloist in Conrad Fritz, I can tell you that. Uh, so we are going to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing and respond to that. You know, it's so wonderful that we are comforted by the Savior, Jesus Christ, and that every valley shall be exalted in Jesus' name. So we have to sing, hark the herald angels sing, to respond to that message. Because the angels are singing that wonderful piece. Jesus was born to earth so we could celebrate that. We could celebrate glory to the newborn king. And because of that comfort, we have peace on earth and mercy mild. God and us sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, all nations, both Gentiles and Jews. Join the triumph of the skies with the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Can you sing that? Yes. Can you sing it loud here and raise the roof off this place? Yes. Let's stand, all three verses. Here we go. <laughs>
And now we are honored by our graceful ringers, and they will play a piece called Dona Nobis Pacha. We are privileged to have the gospel band led by Jay Siegelman, and uh, they are going to do a wonderful song. And uh, come on, gospel band, we got some. We got we've got a different style today, fiddles, and we're gonna we're going to have fun with this song. Uh, and uh, so this is a wonderful song called "Beautiful Star." chuckles, I think it was last week too, and I just thought to myself, you know, I think God laughs along with us just like he cries with us. <laughs> Do that. 
The second Handel's Messiah set uh, deals with four songs in the second half of the part one. Uh, the first one is called the Pifa, or the Pastoral. And this represents the shepherds who are coming to see baby Jesus. Uh, that perhaps they were bagpipers, they were worshiping Jesus, and it's peaceful, it's relaxing, it's very pastoral, shepherds coming to see Jesus. Uh, you'll hear in the music, it's just an instrumental music, it's very gentle and peaceful. Then we will get to uh, Rejoice Greatly, O Daughter of Zion. And this is from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. Uh, it's performed by a soprano. We have Leah Crown here, uh, who will be our soprano soloist for this. And it expresses great joy, just like an opera, but it's an oratorio. Uh, it has a very charming Baroque feel, uh, and it's an upward form of rejoice. So you hear rejoice, rejoice, rejoice ye greatly. It's really similar to a French Baroque style and a French overture style. So you'll hear that. You'll hear a B section in the music, which is peaceful. And then it, we, what we call in music is a da capo aria, where you have an A section, the B section's new music, and then the A section repeats itself, and she'll do different, what we call, melismas. It'll be more colorful. It gives opportunity for the soloists to do your own little melismatic melismas, and Leah does such a great job with that. So you'll hear that rejoice. Then we will have, then shall the eyes of the blind be open, uh, and that deals with the prophetic, um, prophetic words of Isaiah. And the alto soloist, who is Andrea Arena, uh, will sing a recitative relating to the Savior's action. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened because of rejoicing, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. And our final Messiah number is, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. This deals with the summary of the Savior's deed is given in a compilation of words between the Gospel of Isaiah and the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew. The Old Testament part, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd, the anticipation of the Messiah in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 11, is sung by an alto solus. It's in a 12-8 meter, and it's reminiscing of the Pifa, the pastoral, anticipating when the Savior would be born. The new, and uh, that's also sung by our alto solus, Andrea Arena. Now, the New Testament part in the gospel words of Jesus are changed to the third person, come unto him, all ye that labor, a New Testament scripture based in Matthew. The soprano soloist, her name is Heidi Shannon, she was my voice teacher in college, one of them, and she does a wonderful job. She will sing the same melody, but elevated up a fourth instead of F major to B flat major. Handel did that specifically because the Messiah has arrived, and now, instead of anticipating the Messiah, the Messiah has arrived, and he shall feed his flock. Come unto him, all ye that labor, and he will give you rest.
Thank you so much, really. Well done. Uh, so this next song is the first choir number, and uh, it responds really well with, that he will give you rest. And you know what? He is here among us in spirit. And as he's like soft as a snowfall, fragile as the night. The angels singing, the herald the light, breaking in on the people who wait for the morn, who wait for him. Behold, here among us, God's love is newborn. Hope of the prophets who dreamed of shalom, the promise of ages of a haven and home for the lost and forgotten, the foe and the friend, this child who would teach us how hatreds might end. Not through our anger, through violence or fear, and not through indifference will God's reign appear, but in peace and forgiveness by mercy and grace. Behold, in each person see God's blessed face. Hold high each candle and lift every voice. Sing through the darkness, give thanks and rejoice. Sing out peace to God's children. Sing peace to the earth. Behold, in this infant, God, God's love comes to birth. Behold, in this infant, God's love comes to birth. As we reflect on this Advent season of peace, he is here with us. You can feel this spirit and his presence, his gentleness, his warm spirit. He is there reaching out to you. He is here. You just have to reach him and say, I am here. I accept you. Listen to the choir song as they reflect on those words. And Lamar Dirty will sing the tenor soloist. And Holly will play violin. Matthew will play oboe. And uh, Jay will play guitar. So here is the choir's number here among us.
senior pastor, Pastor Carrie Leeper, will deliver a message. I trust you have been blessed as I have this morning as we have come to worship our Lord who has come to earth to be with us. And that last piece in particular ties very nicely into what I'm going to be um, speaking about briefly today. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 25, we hear of how the angel meets with Joseph to tell him what is about to take place. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Matthew writes, This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. My friends, this is the word of the Lord for us. Let us pray. God, we are deeply grateful for your word, which comforts us, guides us, encourages us, gives us hope, fills us with joy, teaches us to love. And today, Lord, we find that it can bring us great peace, particularly as we experience the one who is named Emmanuel. God with us. And so we thank you for being with us, O oh God, in particular as your Holy Spirit came upon Joseph and Mary, come upon each one of us this day, that we may hear once again how it is that your presence brings to us a deep and abiding peace in this life. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The angel said to Joseph, as we find in many of the narratives of the birth of Jesus, an angel comes and tells the people to whom the angel comes, do not be afraid, fear not. It's a common theme actually throughout the scriptures, just as it is with the birth narratives of Jesus. When God tells his people, do not fear, fear not. Throughout the scriptures, when God says that to his people, the people he is calling to serve, perhaps as prophet, priest, or king, he tells them not to fear because he would be with them. The presence of God, the promise of that presence often is coupled with this phrase, do not be afraid, do not fear. The people of God can live 
with peace inside of them precisely because they know that God is with them and he will not leave them or forsake them. So today, in what follows, I'm going to take a walk through a few of those Scripture passages. And the reason that I'm doing this, and if you have a pen and paper, I hope you'll just jot down these references and maybe take some time to reflect on how God is working in each of these of His people's lives. To remind them that what they are about to go through, to experience, to accomplish, will not be done alone, but will be done precisely because God is with them. The story of Moses and Joshua, Joshua in particular, is a powerful one. Joshua, as you may know from the Old Testament, was mentored by Moses. He learned how to live in this life as a leader of God's people from Moses. He needed Moses daily to guide him throughout his early life. But then one day Moses was gone. He died. The question for Joshua now was how would he step into that role of leadership to which God was calling him? Would he be able to be faithful in all circumstances? How would he follow God's plan in leading God's people? Where would the strength come from? Would he find the grace for these people as Moses did? Patience, the fortitude to lead and love as Moses loved the people of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 and verse 9 tells us this. No one, as God is speaking to Joshua, no one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's what Joshua heard from the Lord, and that's what gave him the strength to lead God's people. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I love what Isaiah the prophet tells us in chapter 43, verse 1, when he writes this, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, and I have called you by name. You are mine. There are days in our lives when we need to hear that very word of commitment from our God to be reminded of it. Because even as Jacob said earlier, as he lit the candle, peace is not found in our circumstances being good all the time, but rather peace is found in understanding that God has called us by name and redeemed us and made us into his people we are given a new name, a place of belonging in the family of God. And when we find that, when we experience that, our fears can fade away and peace can fill us. Even the shepherd's psalm in the fourth verse, Psalm 23, a paraphrase of that verse even though I walk through the deepest and darkest valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no bad thing, no evil, for you, O oh God, guide me like a shepherd. Your protection, your guidance is with me. God provides for us not only a place of belonging, but an understanding that he will be there in every circumstance of life. And so it is then in the birth narratives of Jesus. Luke chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. I'm not going to read that, but you would read about Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, being visited by the angel. And what does the angel tell Zechariah? He tells him, do not fear. Your son will have the purpose of making straight paths 
for the Messiah, the Son of God. In Luke chapter 1, the angel visits Mary and tells her the Lord is with her, tells her she's highly favored, and then he tells her to fear not. Why? Because the Lord is there. God's grace and presence was with her and would guide her and her family through raising up the Son of God in this world. And it's exactly what the angel proclaims to those shepherds as they tended their flocks out in the field that night. In Luke chapter 2, we would read, Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. They were afraid. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Fear not, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And that brings me full circle back to that text in Matthew that we read earlier. As the angel tells Joseph to fear not, do not be afraid. Why? Because the Messiah, Emmanuel, the one who is God with us, is coming into the world, and he's going to be part of your family, Joseph. And that's the gift that Jesus gave to his disciples as well as he prepared them for his death later on. In John chapter 14, in verses 26 and 27, he says to them, Basically, don't be afraid. He says, The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. For my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. The peace of Christ which comes to us and then came to those same disciples something like a week later after he told them these words, The day of his resurrection, he entered that locked room where they found themselves. John records it in John 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Their fear melted away, and peace filled them when they knew Jesus was present with them. Friends, may you hear this message today about Emmanuel, who is God with us. He is here among us. I don't know where you came from to get here. I don't know where you're headed. I don't know what fears fill your life, but I do know this. I know that if we turn to these scriptures again and again and remind ourselves that we need not fear, no matter what our circumstances in life may be. Why? Because of Emmanuel, and he is with us. Let us pray. God, we are so deeply grateful for your son, Jesus, the one who takes away our sins who brings us to live under that new name that you have promised, who guides us to know that your peace can fill us in the midst of any and all circumstances. And so we pray today, O oh God, that you would speak to us anew your word of peace, the understanding of your presence. For it is in Jesus' name that we continue to worship. Amen. In grad school for choral conducting, one of the research projects I did, I was in a research class, and one of the research projects I did uh, that I chose was analyzing Bach choruses from cantatas and and make it appropriate for a church choir to sing. Um, 
I analyzed over 200 cantatas, he wrote over 200, and over 200 sacred cantatas, and then over 100 secular cantatas. In fact, choir, he would write a cantata every week for his choir. So it would be kind of something like this every week in box day. Uh, but particularly one of the courses and chorales that I analyzed was this one, the most well-known one, Bach cantata number 147, which is Herz und Mund und Tand und Leben, which is heart and mouth and deed and life. After what Pastor Kerry just said, we can respond and receive that peace. Uh, one of the most famous tunes in Bach is what is known as the Yesu joy of man's desiring. We hear it a lot of times on the radio. Oh, it's beautiful. Yes, 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 I know it. But actually, Bach intended for that, for the congregation to sing. Um, Bach was very much into Martin Luther's theology. And Martin Luther's theology was um, that the church was not um, singing of the language of the people enough, the vernacular language. So what you'll hear is you'll hear the main melody in the violin ones. You'll hear a counter melody in the violin twos. The cellos and the violas are going to have just quarter notes, and then the choir will sing that hymnody. It's like a hymn. Every chorale, he would, every cantata, Bach would end with a chorale, which was like a hymn. So the purpose of Yesu Joy, Man's Design, is a piece of music derived from a chorale. Here is the text, and reflect upon this text. Yesu joy of man's desiring, holy wisdom, love most bright, drawn by thee our souls aspiring, soar to uncreated light. Word of God or flesh that fashioned with the fire of life impassioned, striving still to truth unknown, soaring thine round thy throne. The purpose is Jesus is with us and he is desiring us to accept his gift of salvation. He's desiring a relationship with us. So as we sing this wonderful Bach piece that I finally get to introduce for my choir, introduce Bach to my church choir many years um, later now, uh, may you reflect upon this. And what better choice than to sing at an Advent music festival focused on Yesu joy of man's desire.
one of my friends that I'm privileged to sing with for many years, and actually our director of music when I was attending Grace Church of the Valley, Jan Shetter, a dear, dear woman of faith of God. I'm so glad you and Sheldon are here. Uh, Kayla Clays, who I've sung with for many years, and her husband, Sean, who's another great singer. Thanks for being here. And uh, she's going to sing a beautiful song of O Holy Night. So it happened. He was born desiring us, and it happened on such a silent and holy night. So let's listen to Kayla as she sings O Holy Night.
And in our second song, we will not do all the verses. Uh, let me get it here. We will do verses 1, 2, and 4 of Once in Royal David City. It's in your hymnals, number 250, and the words will be on your screen, so please stand. It's your turn to sing. Let's worship the Lord. As the choir is getting up, which I forgot that was happening, last minute, short term, uh, I hope that you have focused tonight on the message of Jesus Christ. Uh, it is about him and him alone, and that is someone who brings us peace here this morning. I hope you don't leave here today not seeking his gift of salvation and seeking him face to face. He came as a royal child in David's line, and we are here to sing a royal King David's line, King Jesus. He stood on, he stood on a lowly cattle shed, and Jesus Christ was the little child. So let's sing uh, the hymn. We're going to do verses 1, 2, and 4. So go ahead, John. <laughs> Jesus, that wonderful child.
Wow. <laughs> we have uh, worshipped the Lord here this morning. Amen. 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 And so I hope that you'll take the spirit of where we just finished today out into the world with you. Think about who it is that we're here to worship. He is deserving of every bit of energy we just gave him. And so think about how will you respond as you go out into the world this week? What of your life will you give to him in response for his love for you? Uh, as we conclude today, uh, there are a couple of announcements, but you can find them all on our eblast or on our website. Call the office if you have questions. There are offering envelopes out in the lobby. If you uh, get those, pick those up, please. Um, Advent at the A-Frame at First Campus. December 17th, 18th, and 19th at 7 p.m., a play titled The Road to Bethlehem, written by Ed Weber, will be shared by Ed's family and many other players, so you'll want to go check that out. Our Christmas Eve services are at 4 p.m. at our Hope Campus out on Bender Road and at 7 p.m. here at our Grace Campus. And so now what we're going to ask you to do is join with us. In a moment, we're going to sing one more song. And yeah, we're not done. And then we're going to go eat together. Right? So, Joy Olcott and her crew, the Martins are up there in the kitchen. There's, there's people up there waiting to feed us. Are you hungry? Yes. All right. Well, let's take a moment uh, and give thanks to God for that food that we're about to be blessed with. And then after we sing, we can be dismissed to the Family Life Center. I want to say thank you to those who have been on the live stream with us. We are glad you're here. If you have prayer concerns, please reach out to us through our website or call the church office. And so with that, let us take a moment to pray. God, we are so grateful for who Jesus is. We have feasted at his table today. We have walked with him today. And we have worshiped him as is fitting of who he is. And so, God, as we prepare to close and adjourn to the Family Life Center, we pray that you would bless the hands who have prepared that meal for us. We pray that you would bless the fellowship around the tables. We pray that you would bless the meal to our bodies. And above all else, that as we share life together in the Family Life Center, that we would continue to grow as Christian community in relationship with one another, knowing who Jesus is who guides us. And so we go in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. It is a joy to, to worship the Lord with you all. Let us go out with that peace of Jesus and that wonderful child. And let's go to all the ends of the earth and sing. And I would like to invite all participants to come forward. Gospel band, worship team. Graceful ringers, anybody can just come up here and sing. Abby, come up and join the contemporary worship leader here. And let's close. Go ahead. Let's close singing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Please stand.
in the peace of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you.